their intensity much higher than it was last game. They're down in their stance. They're getting after the basketball. They're making good switches. They're covering for one another. They are putting pressure on the ball, something they did not do, creating and forcing turnovers. Avox drawing the double team, and he was rejected from behind. Pippen with the good play coming over to hell. And Pippen goes all the way. Here's Magic. He had a notion to go to the hoop. He has hit on four of six. Lottie Devon's coming off a career-high 27-point performance. And off to the good start today. Good play by Devon's, but he knocked it out of bounds, and Lottie agrees with the call. And, and they can feel it right now that their defense is up. They're pressuring the Bulls. They like what they feel on the floor. Chicago decides to take a timeout and talk about it. The Bulls, only four out of 12 from the field. The crowd responding to the good start by the L.A. Lakers. It has an extremely powerful engine. The most precise ergonomic design. And luxury appointments like hand-finished wood and fine leather. Introducing the Acura Vigor because even the man who flies the most sophisticated aircraft needs some excitement in his life. protect your family with a good investment at a good price you need someone to help you handle the road ahead you need a Goodyear retailer not only because he stocks a wide selection of quality tires but because he can help you select the right tire for your budget and the way you drive a tire that can help provide your family with a secure future good tires good service good people Goodyear Today, Mr. Robinson had a birthday party and got lots of great presents. He got some Air Force 180s from Moses Malone. Ooh, and some more from Michael Jordan. And some more from Charles Barkley. And he got an autographed picture from Commissioner Stern. Commissioner Stern is a great commissioner, but he gives crummy birthday presents. Terry Teagle, nine-year man out of Valor, signed as a Free agent after a strong season with Golden State. Did not get the playing time in his first year with the Lakers and did not come on until the end of the season. Uh, it's been a tough, tough year for me uh, personally, uh, especially after uh, the season that I had up at Golden State. You know, I felt like that, uh, you know, coming here, I wanted to build on, you know, what I accomplished up there. And, uh, you know, the style of play, I think, really threw me off, you know, a little bit. Well, Teagle did play well in the series against his former club, the Golden State Warriors. And Horace Grant making a two out of three from the floor, bringing Chicago with him three. Terry Teagle has gotten off to a good start here in the first quarter. Devots. Four twenty remaining in the opening quarter. Top right setting the pick for Pippen. Shot clock is at five. Caught right. Last touch by Pippen. Good effort by Scotty Pippen going for the steal, but it will be Laker ball. Lakers wasting no time getting down court. Magic to the hook. We have rarely seen the hook shot in this series. He was very effective with it against Portland. That could be a good sign for the Lakers. The tip by Cartwright, a beauty 
by Bill Cartwright. And Divac had left Cartwright to go stop Paxson on the baseline drive. He stopped Paxson, but had no one there to box out Cartwright, who followed up. Lakers lead it by three. A.C. Green lost it. Mike Dudley be complaining. He thought that the outside official called it last touch by Chicago. A.C. handling off the foot, other way. Lakers with a three-point lead. Bob Albert, Mike Fratello, Amon Rashad, Steve Jones from the form in Inglewood. Grant with the putback. Morris Grant has killed the Lakers with his steady play. It's one of those examples of Jordan drawing so much attention, people stepping up to stop him, someone else is open. Effective trap by the Bulls, but a tripping foul sent Sam Perkins flying. Tom Grant in second, and here is the rookie from Clemson, Elvin Campbell, making an early entrance. And Sam Perkins will sit down. Cliff Levingston, who has been a spark off the bench, replacing Horace Grant. Cliff Levingston had a, an interesting uh, theory, did not get much playing time during the regular season. He's really come out of the playoffs, but he said it should make him stronger for the years to come. Magic fouled on the play. Feels his legs are well rested. He'll put a couple of extra years on his career. That's why they call him good news. He's yes. going to find something positive in every situation. And Levingston called for the foul. It put Chicago over the limit. Magic Johnson to the line. We're just under three minutes remaining in this opening quarter. Lakers with a 19-17 lead. Well, the Magic uh, Michael matchup both logging the minutes. And Michael Jordan has actually taken the lead in the assist department over Magic Johnson. Bulls with the ball trailing by three. Pass intended for Jordan, able to recover. Here's Pippen. And last touch by Pippen. That may be the first loose ball that I can remember the Lakers coming up with. Lottie Devots and John Paxson in a heated discussion away from the ball. The last thing the Lakers need right now is for a player to be ejected from the game. crowd cheering the aggressiveness of the Los Angeles Lakers a quality we have rarely seen during this final series Teagle drawing the double team and Jake O'Donnell with the call against the Lakers and here's another look as uh, Devots was called for the foul Lottie Devots in the face of John Paxson and then Cliff Levingston Coming over. Lottie says no problem. Everything's okay. That's Levingston, back yes, backcourt violation. Levingston went from front court to back. Why, Jack Nicholson made the call right behind him. There were a lot of people making that call. Levingston had taken off in the front court. That's where his position was still established, touched the ball, and then came down in the backcourt. Coming up on two minutes. Remaining in this first quarter, Jordan off the steal. Michael Jordan with his second field goal. An emphatic stuff by Jordan. Here's Campbell. Yes, and it counts. The Bulls defense finds a way to get easy scores. Fourth in the league this year in steals. Jordan, one of the best pickpockets you're going to find, and then one of the best finishers at that end. Pre-designed spots on offense for the Lakers. All you got to do is get there. When they double magic, he'll find you. Levingston called for the foul. Eldon Campbell played briefly in the overtime game here in Los Angeles Friday night. You may recall he came on for the, the opening tip of overtime with Lottie Devots in foul trouble. Won the tip, then hit 
a uh, short uh, jump shot. But that's been it in this series for Campbell. Caught right. Making contact with Devon. Oh, what a shot by Bill Conrad. And Devon was right there with the extended hand challenging the shot. And back come the Bulls. Lakers lead at 23-21. Here's Jordan. A gorgeous move again by Michael Jordan going at Vladi Devots strong and then able to lay it home softly. Magic thought he was fouled. No call. And here's Pippen. The Bulls take a 25-23 lead. First time they have led. Well, with the entire rest of the Laker team down on the baseline, if the turnover comes out top, there's no one to cover the backcourt. Not a good play a moment ago by the Lakers. Campbell lost the grip. Magic waiting for a foul call. As a result, he just stayed in front court, did not make the play. You can't do that. And as a result, the Bulls were able to fast break. Teagle called for his second. 40 seconds remaining. In this first quarter, here comes Craig Hodges for the first time. Sam Perkins back. And Vladi Divac will sit down. He leaves with eight points. John Paxson departs. Scott Williams, the rookie from North Carolina, will also check in. Part of the problem with playing these balls is when you start to unravel and come apart, it happens quickly against this team because they run the spurts at you. The defense helps them. And then they're so good at the offensive end. Here's Magic handling the ball out in front, directing the offense, and right when he gets around the top of the circle, he feels that there's a block right there. It should be an obvious call in Magic's mind. As a result, no one to cover the back backcourt. Easy score. Bulls with seven unanswered points. Chicago with a 27-23 lead. Light pressure by the Bulls. Tony Smith, the rookie from Marquette, has come on, and he is trapped. And notice Chicago going right to the trap with people like Campbell and Smith handling the ball. Magic through the foul. Eldon Campbell is not a player you want to see with the ball at center court. No, and that's part of the problem of, of having a James Worthy out of the game or even having a Worthy injured all this time is the fact that he's the other guy when they give the ball, or rather when they double-team Magic and make him give the ball up, the guy that he's used to giving it to is a Worthy who has the ability to push it down the floor, either make something happen, create, or get them into their offense. Now you've either got a Divots, you've got Eldon Campbell, not the same type of person doing those things. Balls lead it by two. Worthy sitting out with a sore left ankle, and Scott out with the hyperextended right shoulder. What they're doing basically is spreading the floor. Pippen now will replace Jordan in the middle of the floor. It's his job to break AC down off the dribble and then hit perhaps Hodges in the corner for a spot up. Pippen off the starter step, went to the left hand. Livingston rejected by Perkins. That's the end of the first quarter. The Bulls 27 and the Lakers 25 after one at game five of the NBA. Final series. So, do you call yourself Mary Lou or Lou? Yes. Do you wear spandex all the time, or is it a Tuesday thing? Yes. Uh, I see you're drinking America's favorite light beer, too. Now, is that because of the great Pilsner taste, or because it's less filling, so you can keep on wearing that thing? No, incredible. Yes. So what'll it be? Is Miller Lite America's favorite because it's less filling or tastes great? Yes. Do you ever say no? Yes. If you order a suit designed around the way you're built, you have to wait about two months. If you want a house designed around the way you live, the wait is two years. But if what you desire is a car designed around the way you drive, you don't have to wait another day. The 1991 Acura Legend Coupe.
this is not what you want in a shave. Now you've got the edge with six rich lubricants for less irritation. You've got the edge. We all like to keep our car looking new. So use Armor All Protectant. It makes your car look like new and helps it last longer. And that makes you look pretty smart. Armor All, it keeps you looking good. Backdraft will blow you away. Don't open that door. Whoa. <laughs> the fire scenes were amazing. And I like it. I loved it. Backdraft. Rated R. Now playing at theaters everywhere. We're at the whole grain games where judges are watching his Wheaties dives into the bowl. It looks good. Yes. Wheaties scores a perfect 100% for whole grain. The other guys are packing it up. They can't match that. Our whole grain champion is Wheaties. Last year, 60 million Americans witnessed the television event of the summer. Get ready. It's back. June 24th, the sequel on NBC. One of the problems of having a big guy, Eldon Campbell, bring the ball up the floor is sometimes they stop in very dangerous places. One step over the half-court line, tough spot. He hands off to Tony Smith, says, you take it. Too much trouble for me. Smith does an excellent job of breaking down the aggressive double team just to maintain possession. Well, tonight's celebrity watch, including you saw Jesse Jackson, Dustin Hoffman, Spike Lee, and there's Jack, who we're told is negotiating to play Jimmy Hoffa in an upcoming motion picture and reportedly he has requested that a role be written in for this man Michael Jordan some people will go to great lengths to hang around with certain people a little one on one though on the set second quarter underway and the balls with a 27 25 lead that a three pointer for Craig Hodges so Craig Hodges continues to drill from outside and hit. He has had an excellent series against the Lakers. Perkins. Perkins on the recovery. So Sam Perkins 0 for 2 thus far tonight following the, the 1 for 15 in game 4. Perkins posting and he took a hit from behind. Cliff Levinson picks up his third. You know to go back a moment ago. When the Bulls knocked out the three-pointer, it's the first time the Lakers have gone to the 1-3-1 half-court trap this early in a basketball game. Mike Dunleavy trying to shake things up. The problem is they went into it when Hodges was on the floor. His assignment, go right to the corner anytime you see a trap and knock down the three. He Our, certainly answered. Horace Grant back. Cliff Levingston departs. Green lost it. And it will be Chicago ball. Michael Jordan, Craig Hodges in the backcourt. Scotty Pippen up front with Scott Williams and Horace Grant. Jordan trying to get it out. Rare turnover committed by the Bulls. They coughed it up only five times on Sunday night. That was a record low for an NBA Final Series. With the good pass from Perkins. I think you can see, as soon as they came up with the steal, A.C. Green just kind of dribbled off to the side rather than try to attack at the other end. Ten points for turnovers for the Bulls, none for the Lakers. Tony Smith called for that foul. After the double team, the Lakers go to their designed areas on the floor. It's a matter of passing and catching to convert. Now it's Tony Smith, the rookie from Marquette, a second-round draft pick guarding Michael Jordan. The officials say last touch by the Bulls. Tony Smith had an excellent game against the Chicago Bulls here at the Forum during the regular season. In fact, he was player of the game. At the game that saw Magic Johnson go down with an injury. And there is Smith. Breaking the Lakers with a one. Yeah, and that was a two-point game at the time when Magic went down with the injury. He played the entire fourth quarter, Smith. They wound up winning by 13. For a while during the season, Pippen threw the foul. For a while, Tony Smith had emerged as the backup at point guard. He was playing extremely well. Mike Dunleavy was giving him his minutes. And then as they got down the stretch run of the season, that last 10, 15 games, he started to fade a little bit. And Dunleavy went back 
uh, to Larry Drew off the bench. Had more confidence at that time in Drew, and as a result, stayed with him. Tony Smith, a big guard at 6'4", 190 pounds. All right, uh, this the play that we refer to as Magic went down. Harris, uh, Horace Grant uh, accidentally making uh, contact, and it led to the emergence in that game of Tony Smith. Eldon Campbell called for that uh, foul, putting Scotty Pippen at the line, and Pippen is now four for five from the line. As a senior at Marquette, Tony Smith averaged 24 a game, although he shot only 41 percent. He was noted for his defensive play. Pressure by the Bulls. Green going all the way. Able to shed Grant, who did not want to pick up number three. See, that's normally where Worthy is, who has the ability to put it on the floor and take it to the basket. They've been missing that since James has had the injury. A.C. Green, two times now we've seen him do it this game. One, he missed a shot. That time he converted. Scott Williams called for the travel. Phil Jackson is upset. Phil Jackson taking a long walk as a timeout is called. The Bulls lead it 32 31 with 9 35 to go. First half. The sports car I want is a Nissan. Uh, no, the one with super hike is steering. No, the other one with super hike is steering. Yeah, the 240. And I tested it someplace curvy. No, I mean curvy. No, I mean really curvy. Then I'd listen to some music. Having my baby. Mm, no, I mean real music. Yes! Because if you don't watch your figure, who will? It's the right beer now. Because when it comes to water, the only place to start is at the top. It's the right beer now. Because when the party's going full steam, you don't want to fill up. So reach for the beer that won't slow you down. The Silver Bullet. The only company in the Air Express business with two next day delivery options is Federal Express. 10.30 a.m. if your package has to arrive early or if it can get there just a little later in the day. We've got a brand new afternoon service that will deliver almost anything up to 150 pounds by 3 o'clock at a price that's tough to beat. Same great service, now twice a day. Federal Express, absolutely, positively the best in the business. Twice a day. The NBA on NBC is brought to you by Nissan, built for the human race. By Coors Light, the one that won't slow you down. The silver bullet is the right beer now. By BF Goodrich TA Tires, the most exciting change you can make to your car. And by Federal Express, absolutely, positively the best in the business, twice a day. A moment ago at the offensive end of the floor, as Williams made one fake, then another fake, he commits the travel. Good defense by the Lakers. But as we've seen so many times where Magic will pull Divots over, here the veteran guy, Michael Jordan, goes over and says, hey, go quick, go strong, keep your head up, don't worry about it. And the form is jumping. The crowd trying to get the home club going. Looking to extend to a game six in Chicago on Friday night. Tony Smith handling against Craig Hodges. So Smith and Johnson in the backcourt. Campbell up front, Wallace Perkins and Green. Shot clock is down to eight. Smith had an ocean. Smith with the drive. So Tony Smith off the bench to hit his first two. And the Lakers lead it 33-32. And that's one of the reasons why Smith was a low percentage shooter in college, because he was so good at putting it on the floor and so strong going to the basket, his perimeter game was not worked on. Hodges, yes. Craig Hodges hitting two of two. The Bulls lead by one. Keep in mind the entire series, the Bulls have had an incredible ability to answer the challenge each time the Lakers try to make a run. Perkins, well, someone lost an assignment. And Perkins with his first field goal. 
Lakers with a one-point lead. And the Lakers actually extending their man-to-man -man defense. A.C. Green, Tony Smith starting to move up and guard their people. And of defense from this crowd of better than 17,000. Pippen with the move around Green and the foul call. A strong move to the right by Scottie Pippen. He was met by Elvin Campbell, who was called for the foul. And Smith, big, strong, and the ability to put it on the floor can get inside the lane and help break down the Bulls' defense. B.J. Armstrong has come on for the first time. There's B.J. in his second year out of Iowa. Scotty Pippen to the free throw line. And here's Vladi Divac back for Eldon Campbell. A.C. Green also departing. So it is Divac up front with Perkins. And now a change. Campbell remains, and Green will sit down. Campbell, Divac, Perkins on the front line. Bulls lead by one. Pressure by Chicago. And the Lakers back to Devots, bringing it up, and he lost it. Jordan off the steal. Again, we hate to keep saying it, but that's part of the problem when you have a 7-footer, 6'11 guy trying to bring it up the floor. Wild gamble pass. And Pippen able to come away with it. Tremendous recovery defensively by the Bulls. Here's Jordan for Grant. Ball knocked away. Bulls wanted a foul. Instead, the Lakers on the run. Campbell. Yes. Oh, what a move by Elton Campbell. The Bulls lead at 38 37. Open court game developing here now. Lakers able to get back on the transition. Pippen putting the move on Campbell. Last touch by Magic. Scottie Pippen is only one for six. This the first ever trip to the finals for the Chicago Bulls in their 25th NBA season. Although back in 1946, the Chicago Stags of the old Basketball Association of America lost to the Philadelphia Warriors four games to one in the PAA's championship series. It's an offensive foul. Or did he step out? Oh, apparently stepped out. Magic with a risky pass intended for Campbell. Scotty Pippen to the open. B.J. Armstrong. And the Bulls' backcourt continues to hammer away. Almost every open shot has been drilled through. Timeout taken by Mike Dunleavy. 6.44 remaining. And the first half, the Bulls lead it by three. Yo, it's the Michael Jordan Flight School. Learn how to increase your hang time. Learn how to dazzle defenses. Learn how to wear really great sneakers. Learn how to sign lots of autographs. Learn how to stick your tongue out during the game. Learn how to play golf during the offseason. Learn how to make the all-star team. Learn how to star in lots of commercials. For details, call us. Operators and stand up by now. Michael Jordan Flight School, not affiliated with the American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics, void or prohibited. Man, where do I sign up? I want to star in a lot of commercials. I want to increase my hang time. Sometimes I dream I'm in Italy, driving this incredible sports car. And my boss is there. He says, We need a ride to the shareholders meeting. Now, here's where it gets weird. The sports car has four doors. I mean, there's no such thing as a four-door sports car. It's just a dream, right? This week on NBA Inside Stuff, you've seen the great plays. Now see the NBA Finals like never before. Bring the tempo back up this time. Now. Go, 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 go. Action! Basketball goes Hollywood, and Inside Stuff takes you to the movies, where cheers Woody Harrelson is serving up some hot shots. Inside Stuff, man, that's my show. That's what I watch. Join host Samad Rashad and Julie Moran for the Inside Stuff, Saturday on NBC.
Welcome back to the Forum at Inglewood with the Chicago Bulls in front of the Los Angeles Lakers by the score of 40 to 37, 6.44 remaining in this first half. Lakers have hit their last six from the field. They are six for seven from the floor in the second quarter, while the Bulls have hit four out of five. Recapping what has taken place in this series, game one, Sam Perkins with the clutch shot from downtown. Lakers winning in Chicago, 93-91. Game two, the Bulls with a record 61.7 tenths shooting from the floor, and the Bulls won it. Overtime session in game three. Bulls led by Jordan took over. They win 104-96 in OT, and then game four, the uh, one wipeout. The Bulls with a 97-82 win over the Lakers, who shot only 37% from the field. Another terrific performance for Michael Jordan. Magic for three. Grant able to count on the rebound. Armstrong and Jordan in the backcourt. Caught right. Grant tipping up front. Here's Jordan. Michael is now five for eight. He has ten. And the Bulls lead it 42-37. It matches their biggest lead of the night. Not what he had in mind, nearly dropped. Here's Campbell. Eldon Campbell off the bench to hit four of five for nine points. Goals by three. Jordan was fouled. Perkins over to help out. And Michael Jordan will go to the line for Perkins, his second personal. If you're going to force Michael Jordan baseline, then the rest of the defensive players must come quickly. This is a real strong move here because the guy that's playing defense, Tony Smith, is riding him out with that forearm, actually drives him behind the backboard, but the rest of the people do not rotate early enough. You let Michael get that close to the rim, he's going to finish off. As Ahmad mentioned earlier, the two days rest certainly help the jam toe injury of Michael Jordan to this point we have not seen any hobbling bothered by the jam big toe on his right foot landed awkwardly after hitting that jump shot of the final seconds that had tied game three last Friday night landing on the tip of his toe he began the game on Sunday wearing sneakers with a slit in the front of the right shoe looking for comfort for the toe but uh, then switched off to the regular shoes early in the first quarter and went out and uh, had his usual magnificent ball game. It's the Bulls 44, Lakers 39 again pressure by Chicago. Terry Teagle has returned. He had the shot, but he fumbled it, then recovered. But there's one of those bad shots. You said it last game. Mike Dunleavy calling him the best bad shot maker in basketball. Lakers trail by three. As we come up to five minutes remaining in the first half. And Jordan uncharacteristically lost it. It's not supposed to happen, is it, that he drops it? Remember, Terry Teagle, an off-balance shot maker, finds control and then gets in the middle, fade, Shoots it going left, back to the right. Back to the live action. Magic setting it on Jordan. And Perkins hit by Cartwright. And a little change of pace that time for Sam Perkins. Made his move to the middle of the floor on the first dribble and quickly, unlike the other times where he takes his first two or three and just pounds it in place trying to read the double team. Only the second team foul committed by the Bulls. The Lakers have four. Eldon Campbell, the rookie from Clemson, a first-round draft pick of the Lakers, getting the playing time in the absence of the injured James Worthy. Here is Teagle. Yes. Terry Teagle has hit four of five. And the Lakers are down by one. Jordan backing Teagle. 
Divac off the rebound. Balls continue to bottle up Magic Johnson. Everywhere he goes, someone's jumping out at him all the time. And the foul on Tigo. It is a charge drawn beautifully by Pippen. Scotty Pippen stepping in the path of Terry Teagle to draw the foul. Mike Dunleavy not real happy with that basketball call. He felt it definitely was a late step in that the block should have been called. That's three on Teagle. And the Lakers with their 11th turnover. And Madden with the call on the Bulls. It's a traveling violation. Teagle sits down. Smith returns. AC Green. Green attempting to check in. Mike Mathis says no, too late. And he is sending him back to the scorer's table. The official's trying to straighten out now whether or not he was at the table in time to allow the substitution to take place. The one substitution was permitted, Tony Smith for Terry Teagle. But Mathis pointing out that A.C. Green did not uh, check in at the table in time. Well, that's the guy that Mike Dunleavy has to get off the floor. He's the one with three personal fouls. Eldon Campbell getting the position again. The Lakers recapture the lead. Campbell has 11, and the foul call. A little breakdown in communication. The Lakers not talking who was going to play who at the defensive end. As a result, a wide open man underneath. Michael finds him, and now in trying to recover, the foul takes place, stopping the easy score. That's three on Perkins. And now A.C. Green. Allowed to check in, replacing Elvin Campbell, who hears it from the crowd. Well, Mike Dunleavy changing his mind. Perkins will depart. Campbell will remain on the floor. Perkins sitting down after collecting his third. Grant to the line for the first time. a 71% free throw shooter. Morris Grant admitting he was very nervous for game number one when the Bulls felt they did not play well. They felt they were tentative. They lost only by two points off the uh, three-point shot by Sam Perkins. But since then, Grant has come up solid. Pippen trying to draw the foul. What a job by Scotty Pippen. A.C. Green very fortunate to hold on, although the Lakers felt that there should have been a foul called on Pippen. Here's Green, rejected by Grant. Shot clock, out of three. And a loose ball foul has been called as the 24-second buzzer went off. It's on Green. The quickness of the Chicago Bulls at the defensive end. A.C. Green got up to the top, thought about dunking the thing, instead just shot the little jump hook. It left just enough room for Grant to get the block. With the Lakers over the foul limit, Grant will go to the line. We have seen bursts by the Chicago Bulls. They have come through with some sensational shooting, and they've had a good shooting second quarter. Bulls now lead it 46-45. You can see the tremendous flexibility in the Chicago team. If, if Scottie Pippen can guard Magic Johnson bringing it up, then you know when he goes back and guards A.C. Green and A.C. is the guy bringing it up, he's going to cause problems for A.C. trying to dribble the ball up the floor. Mike Mathis not uh, satisfied with Green and Pippen lined up uh, so close to the shooter, Horace Grant. You are supposed to be six feet away from the top of the circle, but the defensive player is always allowed on the inside. The Bulls run a little free throw play where they send guys from behind the top of the circle to try and pick up missed free throws.
The Bulls by one with just under three minutes remaining in this first half. Last touch by Jordan. And a timeout being taken by Chicago. 46-45, Chicago leading L.A. We'll be right back. Wouldn't it be great if you invented magic recliners that took you anywhere? So you guys took a trip to the Keys for some boating, volleyball, and a little snorkeling. And wouldn't it be great if just by pushing a button you got beer? Really great premium beer like Keystone. What's this button do? No, 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 no. Cold filtered Keystone and Keystone Light. Bottle beer taste in a can. Wouldn't that be great? If I could afford a sports sedan, the road would belong to me. Bob, I'd have one of those multi-valve engines, independent suspension, and of course, a spoiler on the back. Yeah, if I could afford a sports sedan, life would be a cruise. Oh, it's you, Bob. Presenting the Nissan Sentra SER. Because rich guys shouldn't have all the fun. Say your prayer. Oh. Lieutenant Frank Drebin. Nice work, Frank. What? The only cop smart enough. The water's over there, Frank. Brave enough. And man enough. Give me the strongest thing you got. To star in the only movie big enough. How you doing, Trooper? To be called The Naked Gun 2 and a half. The Smell of Fear. Rated PG-13. Starts Friday, June 28th at theaters everywhere. Top Olympic hopeful Kim Zameskel defends her title at the U.S. Gymnastics Championships, plus the U.S. Track and Field Championships, a special Olympic showcase on NBC. Notre Dame football, coming this fall on NBC. Everybody here at the Forum collectively held their breath as Lottie Divac and Michael Jordan collided and bumped knees, and Divac came out hobbling. They thought, oh, no, but it was just that. Bump knees, Divac is fine. Back to you, Mark. All right, Steve, two minutes, 52 seconds remaining in this first half, and the Laker bench for the first time this series has contributed solid numbers. Elvin Campbell and Terry Teagle. who have not done it uh, prior to tonight, not getting the playing time. Teagle in the starting lineup for the injured Byron Scott. Elvin Campbell has come on along with Tony Smith. For those who may have just tuned in, both James Worthy and Byron Scott sidelined by injury. Here's Campbell. Bulls lead 46-45. Jordan saw the quick opening to his right. He didn't want to give Smith a chance to dig in. As soon as he caught, he decided to go right away, shifted his feet. Excellent call. Chicago with 10 turnovers. They committed only five on Sunday night. Here's Magic. He's been off. Pippen on the rebound. The steal by Campbell. Devots kicked out by Paxson. They're so good defensively, Chicago, and so quick recovering that when you take one from it, it's likely they're going to take it right back from you. Coming up at halftime, Bob Costas, Pat Riley, and they will be chatting with one-time Chicago Bulls standout, Norm Van Leer. Nice play. Eldon Campbell from Bloody Devots and the Lakers lead by one. Norm Van Leer, member of the Bulls for seven seasons. He is their all-time assist leader, one of the tougher defensive players. In Chicago Bull history, what a backcourt. Norm Van Leer, Jerry Sloan. Here's Jordan. Pippen getting to it. And a traveling violation call. Most unusual to see the Chicago Bulls make that many mistakes. Here's Devots. Threw up a prayer, thought he'd draw the foul. And here come the Bulls on a three-on-two. Pippen off the hesitation dribble. A spectacular end-to-end -end move by Scotty Pippen. The Bulls 48 and the Lakers 47. Minute and a half to go. First half. Devots called for steps.
when you have a Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen, where either one has the ability to lead it, take it down the floor, and then make a decision, and probably a good one or a finish, what an extra thing to have on your team. Kivats jumping out, but he stepped out of bounds. Mike Mathis explaining the call to not only the Chicago and L.A. players, but right in the face of Jack Nicholson. And Divac guesses that time, anticipates the baseline pass, and then goes to that side to come up with the steal or deflection. A conversation at the scorer's table, and they are chatting about the time remaining on the shot clock. And they're running it down saying that Vladi never had possession of the ball after he knocked it away from the postman as he tried to save it. There never really was possession, so they should not reset the clock. Shot clock at eight. Bulls with the ball and a one-point lead. Now Jordan posting up. Campbell over to help. Here's Pippen for three. Magic fires down to Green. Good recovery by the Bulls. And they had a fast break that time, and they're just getting into the offense with 13 seconds left. Oh, nice move by Tony Smith. He had Paxson committed on the fake. Lakers 49, Bulls 48. Smith has hit three of three. Shot clock at seven. Pippen, rebounded by Pippen, and now the hold for a final shot. Now remember, if Jordan goes right, you've got Paxson, the three-point shooter, spotting up. Here's Jordan off the fake. Devots. Will it count? No. Racing the clock, and it will not count. What sensational skills for a center to have. Rebound the basketball, and then go one-on-one -on -one against the Bulls defense, trying to beat the clock, and he's just the youngster in the NBA. At halftime, at the Farm in Inglewood, it's the Lakers 49 and the Bulls 48. The high point man, Eldon Campbell with 13. Michael Jordan with 12. Bob Costas, Pat Rowdy coming up at halftime. Stay with us. Some people think he's a Superman. But when a 44-year-old has to throw 75 fastballs, even Nolan Ryan's muscles can ache. So after the game, it's the medicine doctors recommend most for sprains and strains. Advil. For me, it's a couple of Advil, and those muscle aches are long gone. And Advil's gentler on my stomach than aspirin. Today, it isn't aspirin or Tylenol acetaminophen. It's Advil. I feel ready to go another nine innings. Advil. Tablets and caplets. Advanced medicine for pain. I had this dream I was trapped in Dullsville. I had dull neighbors, a dull house. I even had a dull dog. Life was dull. But then I got a fun car, the new Nissan NX, and I became the king of fun. With my 140 horsepower engine, I zipped around, and the town came alive. Life was fun. So I left, because there were other towns that could use some help. You're not just looking at a beer, far more. The ultimate refinement of the Brewmeister's art. The finest grains, the choices. Coors Light, the official beer of the 90s, is the fastest growing premium light beer in America. It keeps growing and growing Thank you. and growing. If your sporty car doesn't feel so sporty anymore, you need a change. By the team, the BF Goodrich Tire Team. 
they'll put on BF Goodrich T8 performance tires. Tires designed just for your sporty car. It's a whole new level of performance. Feel the difference. See your BF Goodrich tire team if they don't see you first. This is the Prudential Halftime Report. Come to the companies of the Prudential and build your future on the rock. Now, once again, here's Bob Costas and Pat Riley. Halftime at the Forum. The Lakers trying to forestall what some would say is the inevitable, but nonetheless a game performance, up by a point at 49-48 at halftime. Now, through the first four games of this series, Eldon Campbell and Terry Teagle had a combined total of 18 points. They get 22 between them in the first half in emergency duty. Campbell 13, Teagle 9. Between them, they are 13 of 16 from the floor. Quite a performance, Bob. You know, as a coach, all the time, players will come to you and say, hey, coach, I'm ready. I'm ready to play. But you'll say to them, are you prepared? Well, there's no doubt tonight that Terry Teagle, Eldon Campbell, Tony Smith have come off the bench to inspire the Lakers. And one of the things that Terry Teagle gives the Lakers that Byron Scott doesn't is he gives them a real post-up game. Great ball movement in the first period by the Lakers. And right here, another decision by the, uh, by the Lakers to be able to post up a guy at 6'5 over John Paxton. Now, one of the things the Lakers have been doing very well on the double teams on Magic Johnson right here, you'll see Eldon Campbell, the rookie who has 13 points in the first half, bury a little dotted line jump shot. Those kinds of performances, those are the things that the Lakers need. They got them big time from those guys. You almost don't expect it, but that's what they needed and that's what they got. You know, I knew something didn't add up in those stats. You got to throw in Tony Smith. Right. Campbell, Teagle, and Smith combined. 13 of 16 from the floor. Remember Teagle, who was supposed to be their firepower off the bench after they made the deal with Golden State, had been 7 of 35, 20%, dating back to game three of the Portland series. He'd been firing blanks, but tonight he's given them some hope. Well, you know, they're different. Uh, A.C. Green runs the four. He blanks the, uh, bangs the offensive boards. They haven't seen that much of Eldon Campbell. Very athletic, big jumping player. Tony Smith, very aggressive, taking the ball to the basket. The Bulls are going to have to make some adjustments on these players, and I'm sure that Phil Jackson will talk to them at halftime about what they have to do to shut them down. Okay, and after this commercial break, we'll check the second city's reaction to the possibility of finishing first, and we'll visit with former Bulls great Norm Van Leer. That's right after this. All right, guys, looks like a good time to go over the signs again. This is a bunt, this is a hit run, this is a steal, this is a hit sign. But none of that counts until after I do this. So, if I do this, what does that mean? Some things can be very complicated. Life insurance shouldn't be one of them. So at the Prudential, our agents take the time to explain things. Let's go over that one more time. Your piece of the rock. We won't let you get it until you've got it. For the first time ever. It's the Lakers versus the Bulls. It's Magic versus Michael. It's the NBA World Championship wow. video. To order your copy, call 1-800-626-1300. Oh, That's 1-800-626-1300 for the official NBA World Championship video. Lakers 49, Bulls 48 at the half in game five. Welcome back to the Prudential Halftime Report. Chicago, the second city, hasn't finished first very often. In baseball, the Cubs and White Sox have won only four World Series between them, and all, of course, came in the early part of this century. In hockey, the Blackhawks haven't won the Stanley Cup since 1961. In fact, Chicago's only title celebration since then came with the Bears in 63 and January of 86 following the 85 football season. Now, the city is poised to cheer the Bulls' first ever NBA title. And now, the starting lineup for your Chicago Bulls! In Chicago, it's Bulls fever from grade school to city hall. You can talk to anybody. You can go to the Board of Trade or the Merck, and you can go to uh, City Hall, and you can go to a local tavern or a pizza parlor, a restaurant. 
course, everybody's talking about the Bulls. The Bulls! We're going to win! The Bulls, definitely. They've got the endurance, they've got the hustle, they've got the, they've got everything going for them. Oh, come on! With the Bulls making their first trip to the NBA Finals, the city has been transformed. At police stations around town, there's been a drop in emergency 911 calls when the Bulls are playing. It's quieter. It's about as you had a game every day. Every day, all day. There no, probably won't be no crime, maybe. In January of 86, when the Bears won the Super Bowl, there were only two emergency calls at Northwestern Memorial Hospital. Tonight, they're hoping for a similarly healthy evening. During any big game, a very quiet, calm feeling comes over the emergency room, and there are very few visits compared to other times. But we know, just shortly after the game is over, all the people will start flowing in with all their problems that they've been putting off during the game. Chicago, of course, is a town known for its restaurants, and they've realized a surge in takeout orders during Bulls games. But the bad news is the waiters have no one to wait on. Prior to the game, we were pretty busy. Uh, as the game progressed and as it actually got into the second quarter, by that time, basically the restaurant emptied. Now, after 25 frustrating years with the Bulls franchise, Chicago's seemingly jinxed entrepreneurs are set to cash in on that long-awaited title. Quite a few times, emotionally and financially. We've uh, set up several times for uh, Cubs and Bears and... We've almost made it, but it doesn't stop you from being a fan. And uh, hopefully tonight it won't stop us from being fans with something to do. Now about the only thing the Bulls faithful don't seem to agree on is how to stage the celebration to honor the team. Should it be a parade like the Bears had when they won the Super Bowl or a downtown rally? Every neighborhood, after all, claims the Bulls as their own. Well, we've been working very closely with Jerry Reinsdorf and Bill Wartz and the entire uh, Bulls management uh, about a rally. And uh, uh, once they uh, successful uh, tonight, uh, uh, we'll announce it immediately uh, to the press and to the people of the city. All right, joining us now in Los Angeles is one of the Bulls' all-time greats, many times an all-star and a member of the all-defensive team, still Chicago's all-time assist leader, although I guess Michael Jordan will eventually overtake him, Norm Van Leer. We mentioned this at the top of the telecast, Norm. Is it true that the old Bulls yourself, Jerry Sloan, now the jazz coach, Borwinkle, Chet Walker, Butterbean Love, do you feel some affinity for this team? Oh, I, I, it's great to me. I just, I love it. I. I I don't know. We're just bringing it back. I mean, I had my old college, St. Francis College, go to NCAA for the first time. I feel good. Do you feel, Norm, that maybe if this does happen, Chicago can get over the top and win a championship, that it might remove the monkey on the back that uh, you and Jerry and everybody had back in the 70s when you couldn't get it done? Well, it'll get it off my back. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Is it heavy? <laughs> it's been heavy. It's been a long time. Is there, is there a difference? Uh, I mean, you being one of the great point guards uh, in this league at 6-2, 6-3, rebounding, defensive-oriented, is there a difference now with the point guards of today with Kevin Johnson, John Stockton, Isaiah Thomas, maybe, than there was when you played? Well, I think they do a little more scoring. They look to score a little more because I think the game's more one-on-one -on -one than when we played, and, and they, they have a lot more offense than the most point guards in the days when I played. Let me take you back to a game in this building. Playoffs in 1973. The Lakers had Wilt, and they had Jerry West and Gail Goodrich, and you guys on the road. Pat Riley, of course, how could I overlook that? In the seventh game, you had the lead with about a minute to go. You put up a shot that Wilt blocked, and you take it from there. Well, <laughs> we were playing fairly well, and uh, we thought we had that game, and uh, of course, if someone's going to block my shot, that, that had to be Wilt. But I was pretty hard that game, if I remember correctly, but he blocked it, and after that, it was all downhill. Goodrich hit the layup, and the Lakers turned it around and pulled it out on their home floor, and you guys were eliminated. One last question. Do you see any of yourself in some of these Bulls, that tenacious, almost wild banshee style of play on defense? Well, somewhat. I, I probably saw a little more in Detroit than I do the Bulls. The Bulls really play a good team, defense trapping, things like that, but it's tough. You now, one last thing. Everybody has tried to stop Michael Jordan. How would you do it? Well, I'd probably fall out <laughs> doing what I do, but I'll take a lot more charges. <laughs> My thanks to Norm Van Leer. And perhaps Pat Riley and I will see you on the post-game show if, in fact, this is the night for the Bulls. In any case, we'll send it back courtside to Marv Albert and Mike Fratello after these messages and a word from your local stations. It's the Lakers by one.
police investigate crime, district attorneys prosecute. These are their stories. It's really an excellent program. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. <laughs> hey. Whoa. Holy God. What are you in for, mouse? Serial killer. Bad guys. You know, Law & Order is cutting-edge drama. <laughs> I love you for making this happen for me. Uh, Law & Order, Tuesday on NBC. You'll love what you're in for. They still singing those knit mittens? This is my man, Juice. Juice is about the most serious guard out here. Dishing the ball up here, everybody. I want to check some out. Check out this black top. These shoes only two days old, but Juice plays so much, he plays like eight, nine hundred times a day, man. These <laughs> shoes are dirty. If this had been a regular shoe, he'd have fell out of them. He couldn't come back and play no more because it's a black top shoe built for the outdoor game. Juice can live and play another day. My man, Juice, play outdoors. He can't play indoors because he don't live nowhere. This is Juice. My man, he got a house. I'm just playing. He's got a house. <laughs> playing ball and talking about black tops. What is the score? I got next game. When you go home, part of your business keeps working. One of the most important parts, New England Telephone. We monitor our network 24 hours a day and head off trouble before it affects you. So your phone, fax, and data lines keep working. Night and day. Nobody's in step with your business needs like we are. We're the one for you, New England. New England Telephone, part of the 9X family. I want to ask you about something. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm crazy about you. Well, I'm crazy about you, too. That's it? <laughs> what? What? Come on, what? Showers and thunderstorms early, clearing light, temperatures in the 50s. Halftime of the form, Lakers by one over the Bulls. And Mike, this is the first time that we've seen this level of emotion Barb, from... Happy birthday! <laughs> what 35 what is... years old today. God uh, you know, bless you. Diane, I'm Lakers. so glad that someone <laughs> recognizes what a hokey trick. It was a surprise for you. <laughs> Have a good I'll time, guys. I didn't quite feel the effect of that. Could... Tough Sorry. sitting next to such a celebrity. Everyone in Hollywood knows what, happy birthday from everyone. What a setup. But I, I didn't quite get the right effect from that. Listen, back to business. Let's talk about the Lakers. Yes, the level of be, emotion, as we were saying. Got to be happy. Out-rebounded the Bulls, forced 12 turnovers, and got them shooting 44%. The aggression is there. And the turnovers for both clubs at 12 apiece, a high number for the Chicago Bulls. We'll be right back. This is how the roomy new Cutlass Supreme SL looks after traveling 300 highway miles on just 10 gallons of gas. And this is how Honda Accord looks after the same challenge. Well, if it hadn't run out of gas 20 miles back, you'd see that it's smaller and it's blue. Next trip, Dad, it's yours. Who says you can't get great gas mileage in a roomy, comfortable car? Cutlass Supreme is one car that does it all and does it right. This is the new generation of old. Thirsty. Got to have it. There's one thing everybody's got to have. Really want it. Cause deep down, we all want the same thing. The cool, crisp taste, the fluids, minerals, and energy of Gatorade. <sighs> Gatorade thirst quencher for that deep down body thirst. It's a symbol of security for millions of Americans. A document that protects your rights in all 50 states. And an inspiration for all who honor it. It's the Goodyear Promise. Available only with Goodyear Certified Auto Service. It includes a nationwide warranty that promises we'll fix your car right or fix it again free. At 2,700 locations nationwide. Good tires. Good service. Good people. Goodyear. It's an all-new Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson with filmmaker Robert Townsend. Then just keep that TV on for Dave's show and comedian David Steinberg. Welcome back to the Forum in Inglewood with the Lakers leading the Bulls 49 to 48 of the crowd attempting to urge the Lakers on at Chicago Ball as we get underway in the first half. 
The Lakers 20 for 40, 50 percent from the field. Chicago 45 percent on 17 for 38. Elvin Campbell off the bench leading the Lakers. Scottie Pippen recapturing the lead for Chicago. Campbell with 13 points on 6 of 8 from the field. Terry Teagle in the starting lineup replacing the injured Byron Scott hit 4 out of 5 for 9 points. Magic Johnson with 6 points along with 10 assists. Michael Jordan with 12. Scottie Pippen with 13 against Chicago getting balanced scoring. Here's A.C. Green. Rebounded by Magic Johnson. And he's fouled. Michael Jordan, from the time Magic started to bring the ball up the floor, put pressure on him. Once he gave it up, he did not let Magic get it back again to do anything at the offensive end. You see the stats on Campbell, the rookie out of Clemson. Michael Jordan, 5 for 11 for his 12 points. Magic is 5 for 5 from the line. Lakers and Bulls tied at 50. And now the Lakers by one. Five Albert, Mike Fratello, Ahmad Rashad, and Steve Jones from the form in Inglewood. Here's Conright. Bill Conright with six points, got off to a slow start, missed his first five field goal attempts, but he's come on. Chicago with a one-point lead. Jordan with the steal. Pippen moving on green. Scotty Pippen has 15. And the Bulls take a 54-51 lead. Michael Jordan knows that Magic Johnson likes to throw that hook pass over the head. He always has his hands ready to go up and try to get a piece of those. He's probably de deflected a half dozen in this series. Teagle with a wild shot. And as you have mentioned, a typical Terry Teagle shot. If you're coaching Terry Teagle, you live and die by the Teagle jumper. Paxson, yes. John Paxson has hit on three of three. The Bulls open strong in this third quarter. They now lead by five. Crowd wanted a foul on Jordan. Magic with the spin the bucket. Chicago's lead is three. Game five of the NBA Championship Series. Lakers hoping to extend to a game six on Friday night. Bulls try to wrap it. Here's Green. So the Lakers move within one. A.C. Green just made a four-point swing right there because Michael Jordan had a wide-open layup on a backdoor move, but A.C. got a piece of the ball with his hands on defense and converted at the offensive end. Jordan had it knocked away by Perkins. A.C. Green from Magic. So the Lakers going to the run. Take a one-point lead. Again, the aggressive defense forcing some mistakes, getting some easy scores as a result. Cartwright. Yes. Bill Cartwright. The Bulls, 58. And the Lakers, 57. Cartwright has hit his last four. Magic for three. Yes. Lakers by two. Jordan to the reverse. So Michael able to answer. And Magic looking to push it down court. Here's Green stripped by Jordan. Pippen with Perkins back. They change in so quickly. They go from the defense to the offense and make you pay the price. The ball 62 and the Lakers 60. For early third, a tired start at both ends. Tito and Grant with the rebound. 
Pippen. Oh, Scotty Pippen has broken loose in this third quarter. He has cashed in for eight of his 19 here in the third. The Bulls by four. Timeout has been called. Who leads the team in steals and block shots loves to come from behind the offensive. There's smoke, there's fire. The surefire performance of AC Delco. We don't just race, we win. As Terry Teagle has committed his fourth. Well, Jordan knows that if he can pit the fourth on Teagle, that's one of the offensive threats out of the game. He goes right at it, takes it off the dribble. Fourth foul on Teagle. Tony Smith, the rookie from Marquette, will come on for Terry Teagle. Smith played 11 minutes in the first half and hit three for three from the field. 15 points for Jordan. So Teagle sits down four for eight from the floor for nine points. Michael Jordan seeking his 16th point. Patrick Johnson, 13 points, 11 assists, six rebounds. The Bulls have taken a six-point lead. It is their biggest lead of the game. Evox, Perkins, and Green up front. Smith and Johnson in the backcourt. Sam Perkins to the foul line. Scotty Pippen raising his hand. And he has called for his first. Bulls changing up their defensive tactics. Instead of playing behind Perkins, staying in front of him, all the time staying in front, forcing the lob pass, and then relying on the weak side help or rotation from away from the basketball to stop the score. It has been another quiet evening for Sam Perkins. One for 15 in game number four on Sunday. He's one for four thus far tonight. And three out of three from the line. But one of the differences between Perkins and the post-up people for the Bulls, he kind of meanders across the lane, allows Chicago to put a body on him and ride him out of his good position, whereas the Bulls flash and get there quickly. Jordan, yes. 18 for Jordan. The Bulls by six. Phil Jackson contending that Tony Smith stepped out of bounds off that dribble move. Magic off the double team, lost it. And here comes Pippen. The reverse slam by Pippen, who has destroyed the Lakers here in the third quarter. There's that scrambling Bulls defense making things happen from the weak side or blind side where Magic can't see when they turn him. Pippen's coming. The result, another easy two points. Scotty Pippen with 10 of his 21 here in the third. The Bulls in the midst of a 12-2 run. Perkins from downtown. Seventy sixty-five, Chicago. You can see the Bulls on fire. Ten of eleven from the field. Pippen and Perkins on the rebound. This has been a pattern for Chicago right throughout the playoffs. Magic. That's a three-pointer. And the Lakers within two as they've gone to the long-range bomb. Looking to counter the hot Chicago shooting. Each game of this series, Chicago has had one or two stretches where they have been on fire. They are in the midst of it here. Paxson makes it four out of four. And again, just when the Lakers get it going, just when the crowd gets into it, they answer. Magic again trying for the three. Four-point Chicago lead. 
looking for the travel. Here's Jordan for Grant. And the foul committed by Devons. That is his second. Well, the Lakers knew they were in trouble when it was Michael Jordan on the sideline being played by Vlade Divac. Immediately, the Lakers sent another guy over to double team and help out. As Magic comes, Michael decides, I'm going to get away from him, go down to the baseline where I feel real comfortable, always looking for his open teammates in the middle of the lane. Morris Grant, two for four from the foul line. Four minutes, 24 seconds remaining in this third quarter. Did you know that Horace and Harvey Grant are with Tom and Dick Van Arsdale, the only twins ever to have played in the NBA? That's my fact for the night. Yes, I knew that. Okay. Just checking. You know, I thought we were attacked by a crazed fan. It will be. Laker ball. You know, I thought we were attacked by a crazed fan at halftime, and by golly, I think we were. <laughs> we were attacked by a crazy, you're right. Chicago by five as we come up on four minutes remaining in this third quarter. Devots, he went to the crossover dribble. Perkins. Chicago looking for the clean block, but a foul call. Let's go back a moment ago and take a look whether or not there was a deflection on that pass by Vlade Divac as he looks cross court. The ball sailing over everyone's head. No one touched the basketball. A gift for the Lakers. Bill Cartwright was called for the foul. That's four on Cartwright. Sam Perkins, four for four from the foul line. 82% from the line over the regular season. And only 68% in this series going into tonight's game. The ball 73. The Lakers 69. It is all on the line for the Lakers. The Bulls win, it is all over. If the Lakers can win, it goes back to Chicago for a game six on Friday night. Smith nearly picked it off. Jordan with the shot clock rolling down. Magic fires for Smith. Good recovery. It counts. Tony Smith with the field goal and the foul called on Pippen. Michael Jordan hasn't taken many bad shots in this series, but this one with a couple defenders hanging on him leads to the easy score and potential three-point play. Magic Johnson reacting to the good effort by Tony Smith. The Bulls call for time. They lead by two. Yo, Mars Blackman here with the Ladders Lamp. I'm the genie on the lamp. I'm granting you just one wish. What should I wish for? Do you know? Do you know? Do you know? A million dollars? Nah, tax problem. A new car? Can't drive. I got it. A wop ba ba loo ba la bam boom. Look, mom, I can fly. I like that genie. I am the greatest. For the past two years, more hardworking truck owners switched to Chevy than to any other truck. And now Chevy full-size pickup is America's best-selling truck. This is... Number one, for one simple reason. They work. The heartbeat of America. Today's number one truck is Chevrolet. We ask pasta lovers in Italian neighborhoods to try new microwave main meals from Chef Boyardee. These are absolutely good. Absolutely. It's delicioso. Hey, Frank, try a little more. Perfect. The more you put them out, the better the taste. You got tomato. Got meat. Little onion in here. Very good. 
Well, you put onion in it. You have to put onion in it. What's the matter with you? Very delicious. But my wife's comes first. I'm surprised it's Chef Boyardee. New main meals from Chef Boyardee. Simply Italian. Simply terrific. Very close to Italian. Selected in the 1984 college draft. Reminder at the end of tonight's telecast, we'll select the Miller Genuine Draft Player of the Game. 3.35 remaining in the third quarter. The Bulls lead the Lakers 73-71, and Tony Smith will go to the foul line hoping to complete a three-point play. That lead pass for Magic Johnson accounted for his 13th assist. Tony Smith has done the job off the bench. Nine points for Smith. The Bulls now lead it by one. Jordan and Paxson in the backcourt. Will Purdue has replaced Bill Conrad. He is up front, along with Grant and Pippen. Good double team. Campbell over to help. Here is Pippen. Scotty Pippen has 23, and the Bulls lead 75-72. Michael Jordan always seems to get that good look at the floor to find the open player, whether it's in the lane or entirely on the other side of the floor. Traveling violation on Smith. If you double-team Jordan, it's got to be tight. You have to come big. You can't let him look across the floor, sideline to sideline. Scotty Pippen, 23 points, five steals, six rebounds. He's led the Chicago surge here in the third. Paxson lost the grip. Lakers look to break. And a traveling violation called on Magic Johnson. When it's going bad, the most unlikely things happen. Magic with a wide open fast break situation. The ball just doesn't come up. As a result, the carry turnover. Magic looking at those hands saying, don't fail me now. Ball's back in possession, leading by three. And a reach in foul on Smith. It's an on-shooting foul for Smith, his second. Pippen. Magic checking the floor for a fast break opportunity. And AC Green making the good catch to put it down. Back come the Bulls. And it will be Laker ball. Bulls trying to score right back at the Lakers if the Magic measured this one up and laid it right on the money for AC. Bulls by one. Chicago with its 14th turnover. Lakers have 16. Evats had it knocked away. Trying to get a little too fine with that pass attempt to Green. But the Lakers had all the spots filled. It was just a matter of finding the open guy and delivering. He held just a little bit too long. Eldon Campbell. Looked like he changed his mind on the way up. Pippen on the acceleration. Stopped by Campbell. It will be Laker ball. And that's all you ask of players. If you know you take a bad shot or if you know you make a mistake, don't hang your head. Just go get it back for us at the other end. Exactly what Campbell did with the block shot. Campbell, an excellent shot blocker. Led the ACC in block shots last season. Lakers cough it up. 127 remaining. In the third, the Bulls 75 and the Lakers 74. High number of turnovers for both clubs. In particular by the Bulls, who rarely are called for turnovers. And the foul called on the Lakers. That is their third team foul. It's on Campbell. 
When Michael goes baseline, the rest of the Lakers must come to help out because he either can finish by going underneath the rim or he has the great ability to pull it back, reverse dribble, and take it in the middle. Right there you can see he has collapsed the Laker defense where all five gold shirts are surrounding Jordan. The stat line on Michael Jordan, 7 for 14 from the field. Now four out of five from the foul line. Here's B.J. Armstrong replacing John Paxson. So the Bulls lead at 76-74. Buddy Devon's helping out. Smith, five for five from the field, and the game is tied at 76. And there's that weak side attack as Jordan takes the lob off the back pick play and slams it down. But going back to the Lakers, there's that weak side attack which has been missing. Get the ball out of the post and reverse it. The Bull 78, and the Lakers 76. Time winding down in the third. Devots putting the move on Purdue. Campbell, career high, 15 for Eldon Campbell, and the game is tied at 78. Pippen played by Green. 20 seconds to go in the quarter. Here's Jordan. Oh, what a move by Michael Jordan, going to the left hand and able to squeeze through to give the Bulls a two-point lead. Out of 10 seconds, remaining in the quarter. Magic. Right there. Dumps it off. And Campbell ties it at 80. Final seconds. Pippen gets it off. Looking to draw the foul. No call. After three. At the four. The Bulls and the Lakers are tied at 80. Scotty Pippen with the lead for Michael Jordan. The Lakers able to come right back. Largest move by Jordan with the left hand. We'll be back after these messages and a word from your local station. Late in the first round. I think there were a few more questions uh, than that, than just his stoic expression. It was whether or not he was going to show up every night during the 82-game regular season. It's a long season in the NBA. There were many nights in college that he was missing from his collegiate team. Well, the expression gave off the feeling that he did not care at times. And he has played well in his uh, first NBA season. Has not received the playing time of the finals extensively until this evening. Here's Pippen, changed his mind. Grant had it knocked away by Campbell. Pippen, Scotty Pippen with 25 points. 12 of the 25 coming in the third quarter. The Bulls 84 and the Lakers 82. Lonnie Devots. And it will be Los Angeles ball. Last touch by Chicago. Chicago Bulls looking to make it a clean sweep here in L.A. Lakers have lost four straight games at home in the finals. They have dropped two straight to Detroit back at 89. A.C. Green has tied it at 84. So the two straight losses to Detroit, and they've lost two in a row to the Bulls coming into tonight. Two minutes gone by in the fourth. Marv Albert, Mike Fratello, Amon Rashad, Steve Jones, Michael Jordan, yes. He has 25. Chicago by two. Once again, the Lakers looking to run. Off the out-of-bounds play, most people just content to get it in, but not Magic. Always looking for his teammates under the basket. Simple inbounds pass turns into a great look and score. Pippen was called for that foul, and a timeout has been taken. 
what they won't do in commercials these days by Miller Lite. I mean, they resort to all sorts of tactics, brainwash. Now, take Miller Lite six-pack. They would have you believe that it's America's favorite light beer because it has great Pilsner taste. Gonna love it. But at the same time, they try to convince you that it's because it's less filling. Tastes great. I mean, come on, by Miller Lite. What do they take me for, big star? Seriously. Is Miller Lite America's favorite because it's less filling or tastes great? Yes. Hi, your place. Would you like to join me for a light? Your treat, it's on me. Okay, but it's my treat. Oh, great. Okay. In Japan, where the luxury performance sedan has been revolutionized by Lexus and Infiniti, a new luxury performance sedan has just won Japan's highest honor. Introducing the new Diamante from Mitsubishi, Japan's car of the year. Mitsubishi, the word is getting around. Once he was programmed to destroy the future. Now his mission me. is to protect it. Arnold Schwarzenegger, Terminator 2, Judgment Day, rated R. Starts Wednesday, July 3rd at a theater near you. We're at the whole brain games where judges are watching as Wheaties dives into the bowl. It looks good. Yes, Wheaties scores a perfect 100% for whole grain. The other guys are packing it up. They can't match that. Our whole grain champion is Wheaties. The NBA on NBC is brought to you by Diamante, the new luxury performance sedan from Mitsubishi. By Miller Lite. Is it America's favorite light beer because it's less filling or tastes great? Yes. By the Prudential. Come to the companies of the Prudential and build your future on the rock. And by Delta Airlines. We love to fly and it shows. Welcome back to the Forum in Inglewood, California. 9.51 remaining in the fourth quarter and the Bulls lead the Lakers 86-84. The rookies Tony Cam uh, Eldon Campbell and Tony Smith. My apologies to uh, Tony Campbell of the Minnesota T-Wolves, Mike. Eldon Campbell and Tony Smith have done the job off the bench. Eldon 8 for 11 from the field. And Tony Smith 5 for 5. Laker ball. They are down by two. Here's Perkins. The game is tied at 86. And Will Purdue that time gave Perkins a little too much space to turn and see the basket instead of having that body up against him tight. George with the open shot. And the loose ball foul called on Will Perdue. So he's picked up a quick three. Came on for Bill Cartwright after Cartwright collected his fourth. Now Scott Williams will check in, replacing Will Perdue. Chicago Bulls looking to win their first ever NBA championship for the Lakers. It is their ninth appearance in the finals over the last 12 years. A remarkable record. Scott Williams called for the foul. And the Bulls piling the fouls up here in the fourth quarter. They are already over the limit. Scott Williams hasn't earned enough stars or badges yet to be able to come in and double forearm a Sam Perkins in the low post. Bill Cartwright, perhaps it's okay. Scott Williams, no, not yet. Perkins, five for six from the free throw line. 13 points for Sam Perkins. Lakers lead by one. Biggest lead of the game, a margin of eight. Bulls led 70, 62. Earlier, Lakers led by as many as five. They now lead by two. Armstrong and Jordan in the backcourt. Pippen, Williams, and Grant up front. Traveling violation. 
So many small things add up in a championship series. If you go back to game three, the overtime loss for the Lakers, they shoot only 64% from the foul line, miss nine free throws, and lose in overtime. They're shooting over 85% today. They were an 80% free throw shooting team for the regular season. This could be a 2-2 series very easily. And the call against Perkins is steps. A host of turnovers committed at both ends. Lakers with 19, the Bulls with 15. Perkins just changing feet as he tries to make his offensive move to travel. And the foul called on Smith. A stutter step move by Michael Jordan to set it up. Tony Smith called for his third foul. And and that's where Michael Jordan is the toughest to play, at the top of the circle with the basketball, because now he has both directions to go in, and he can pull the defense from each wing and find an open teammate. It's tough to guard him one-on-one -on -one there. That was only the first team foul for the Lakers. A.C. Green with the rebound. Magic backing Jordan. Perkins for three. Rebound, Magic. And he keeps it alive. Here's Magic. Rejected. And Armstrong's pass picked off. Smith's pass picked off by Armstrong. Two on one. Pippen. Fouled by Perkins. A tremendous series of defensive plays by both teams. They're going to award the ball out of bounds. The, the interpretation on that, there are two degrees of flagrant foul. The A degree means that you're really not playing the basketball and trying to stop the shot, that you're playing the person. That means you shoot the free throws and get it out on the side. The second level of flagrant foul, the B interpretation, could mean an ejection if you're trying to hurt someone. So it is flagrant foul A that is indicated. Pippen gets the two, and then Chicago receives possession. And Mike Dunleavy right there talking to Jake O'Donnell saying you know in his opinion he was trying to block the shot not just playing the player's body Mike Mathis who made the call the same official who made the call in game three which the Lakers feel rather was game two where the Lakers felt that it turned it around Lakers and Bulls tied at 88 740 remaining in the fourth. Now Campbell on Jordan. Went to the fadeaway. What a move by Michael Jordan. He has 27. So a four-point play for Chicago to take a two-point lead. And a foul. All shooting fouls right here. The Bulls are over the limit. Scott Williams collecting his second. Michael Jordan can sense that the crowd is in it, that the Lakers are in it. He's going to take it into his own hands. He starts actually in the middle of the lane and finishes up four feet outside the lane line on that shot. Tony Smith missing on his first. He was only 40 for 57 from the line during the season. 70% foul shooter. The Bulls 90 and the Lakers 89. Picking off Smith, allowing the jumper by Jordan. Rebounded by Magic. A lead for Green. AC Green beating Scotty Pippen. Providing the Lakers with a one-point lead. It's just knowing the guy that you're passing the ball to, what his ability is to catch it, and how high he can get up. 13 for Green. Jordan. He was stopped by Campbell. Excellent play by Eldon Campbell. It will be Laker ball. Timeout has been called by Chicago.
Ever since Mitsubishi Motors began 75 years ago, the diamond has been used as the unbending guiding principle of Mitsubishi quality. The name Mitsubishi means three diamonds. Now, for its diamond anniversary, Mitsubishi proudly introduces the Diamante, a new luxury performance sedan that is brilliant in every facet. The new Diamante from Mitsubishi. The word is getting around. Want to play rock and roll tennis? That was weird. This is it. There's only one light beer with the big taste of Miller Genuine Draft. Cold filtered Genuine Draft Light. Yeah, we're gonna need some help up here, over. Discover Genuine Draft Light. Well, the form is rocking. The Lakers lead the Bulls 91-90. Let's go over to Steve Jones. Remember, 4.46 to go in the first game back here at the Forum. They played that song, We Love L.A. That song, since I have been coming to the Forum, has been the kiss of death for the Los Angeles Lakers. they got a one-point advantage right now, and they hope that that song does not show up tonight. Back to you, Marv. An ominous note from Steve. With 6.47 remaining in the fourth quarter, Magic Johnson working against Michael Jordan. Magic with 16 points, 18 assists. Campbell! Now, did that go in from Magic, or was it Campbell? Phil Jackson complaining to the official that the ball actually was going in the cylinder, and Campbell reached up and touched it. It should be waved off, in his opinion. Keep an eye now. If the ball is in the cylinder when Campbell touches it, no basket. Again, a look from a different angle. The ball, the cylinder, and when Campbell touches it from that angle, it almost looks like he does guide it into the basket. Does he touch before it gets to the cylinder? I say good basket. Now the officials discussing it, they do not have the luxury of the replay from our angle here at midcourt. At first, it appeared that Magic did shoot it and drilled it home with Campbell guiding it in. Then you look at the replay, I agree with uh, with your opinion. Remember, if Campbell touches the ball before it gets in that cylinder, then it's a good basket. As Elvin goes up, the ball's outside the cylinder, there's the touch, and then he guides it in. that the basket does count. Such a tough call because they are checking the memory bank. So the basket counts and the foul called on Levingston. Elvin Campbell to the line. He's three for three from the line. Lakers 93, the Bulls 96 and a half remaining in the fourth quarter. Paxson and Jordan now in the backcourt. Pippen, Cartwright, and Livingston up front. Trying to get Jordan in the isolation on the left side of the floor. The other four Bulls on the right side. Pippen with the open shot for three. Scotty Pippen has tied it. 30 points for Scotty Pippen. He had 12 in the third to lead the ball. Patrick's pass deflected and picked off by Levingston. Those are the great hands of the Bulls, always up anticipating Magic's over-the-head hook pass. 
Green over to help. Shot clock at six. Conright. Yeah. Oh, what a play by Pippen to keep it alive. And Perkins just jumped a little too soon. He mistimed his jump. He was on the way down while Pippen was on the way up. Shot clock at 10. Game tied at 93. Paxson with the open shot. And back up the Lakers. Magic fires off the dribble to Smith. Jordan batting it away. Jordan tied up by Campbell. Jordan claiming that he was calling for a timeout. And he got the call. Jake O'Donnell at first not able to really understand what Jordan was doing down there when Jordan jumped up and said that was a timeout I was calling. Jake said you're right you had the possession and I'll recognize that before the jump ball took place. The scramble for the ball right there possession timeout. Good call. If your sporty car doesn't feel so sporty anymore. You need a change by the team, the BF Goodrich Tire Team. They'll put on BF Goodrich T8 Performance Tires, tires designed just for your sporty car. It's a whole new level of performance. Feel the difference. See your BF Goodrich Tire Team if they don't see you first. For 75 years, Mitsubishi Motors' diamond emblem has symbolized its unbending standard of quality. Introducing the highest expression of that standard, the Diamante, where meticulous design and craftsmanship lead to extraordinary comfort and driving pleasure. Diamante, the new luxury performance sedan from Mitsubishi. The word is getting around. Hey, Mike, you like lean beef? Oh, okay, okay. How about fresh lettuce and tomato? I'll take that as a yes. All the trimmings? All right. Let's say we put it all on a toasted sesame seed bun. McDonald's calls it the new McLean Deluxe, Michael. It's 91% fat-free, 100% delicious. Say, Michael, can we get you one? Ha <laughs> ha, two it is. McDonald's new McLean Deluxe, the official sandwich of the NBA. Hi, basketball fans. We're Mark and Brian from The Adventures of Mark and Brian, coming up this fall. We're going to do a bunch of really neat stunts, like we're going to swim with sharks, we're going to swing on the trapeze with the circus, and take soon we're going to go whitewater rafting in there. But our biggest stunt of all, we're going up against 60 Minutes on Sunday night. The Bulls and the Lakers each have three full timeouts. They each have a 20. The Bulls have been over the foul limit since early this fourth quarter. Lakers have two fouls to give. 5.08 remaining in the fourth. It is game five of the best of seven NBA championship series. Lakers trailing three games to one. Hoping to bring this series back to Chicago for a game six on Friday night. Magic. Michael have gone the distance. Neither has sat down. Pippen, who has had a sensational game, leading the way with 30 points. Shot clock out of two. Pippen has to force it. Bulls and Lakers tied at 93. The rookie Tony Smith out of Marquette. The rookie Elvin Campbell out of Clemson have come up big here this evening. Smith off a double team. Perkins, shot clock at two. Smith has to fire. Jordan on the rebound. A poor job of screening out in front as Magic tried to come off the pick and roll. As a result, the defense was able to stay at home. Foul called on Smith. Keep a look at the top of the circle. This is supposed to be a pick and roll. You've got to screen Michael Jordan. You can't miss him. We call that screening air. As a result, Jordan never gets off of magic. Foul on Smith is fourth. Lottie Devon's returning. Eldon Campbell sitting down with 21 points. Caught right. Stopped by Devon. 
Paxson shooting. John Paxson gives the Bulls a 95-93 lead. Paxson is 5 for 7. He has 12 points. Open shot for Perkins. Cartwright on the rebound. Can't ask for much better look. 16-footer in the foul line area, wide open, no one playing. Paxson open again. John Paxson continues to provide the crushing shots. The Bulls 97, the Lakers 93, and the Lakers will talk it over. Timeout taken with 324 remaining in the fourth. Notre Dame spent two seasons with San Antonio. This is sixth year with Chicago. His older brother Jim, a standout player over 11 years with Portland and Boston. Their dad played in the NBA in the late 50s. He shot just under 55% during the regular season, and he's at 62-plus for the final series. Yeah, and 44% from the three-point line, and only 41 as Sam Perkins misses on a three-point attempt. Only 41 free throws taken this year. And here's Paxson. Six consecutive for John Paxson. And the Bulls lead 99-93, just under three minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. The point I'm trying to make, only 41 free throws, is that this guy doesn't shoot a high percentage because he's a driver, slasher. He's a pull-up jump shooter. Perkins. So Perkins to the driving hook. And the Bulls now lead 99-95. And a defense from this form crowd. Jordan with the crossover and the bucket. He goes wherever he wants to on the basketball floor. That's how good he is. 29 for Michael Jordan. The Bulls lead by six as they gun for their first ever NBA championship. And the foul call on the Bulls. It's on Paxson. One of the few layup opportunities for Paxson is the fast break situation. When he gets out in front, they're going to give it to him. Jordan against the double team, the triple team, the rotating defense, the pump fake, the rotations, still finds a way to score. Sam Perkins, seven for eight from the free throw line. This is a game that has been close throughout at one stretch. Chicago had an eight-point lead. The Bulls led by as many as five. And the Bulls have a five-point advantage. Coming up on two minutes remaining in the fourth. Paxson open again. He has been unconscious. 18 for Paxson. He's hit 8 of 11 from the field. Seven-point lead for Chicago. Perkins. It's been all Sam Perkins offensively. Cartwright called for his fifth. The Bulls execute their offense so well. A little scissor cut cross off the post. Two defenders for the Lakers go to Jordan. Paxson wide open. The rest of the bench loves it. They execute their half-court offense as well as anyone in the league. Perkins 8 for 10 from the foul line. Lakers have hit 21 of 27 from the free throw line. Bulls lead 103-97. Since the 2-3-2 format was instituted, the team with the four home games has won nine out of ten times, the exception of the Lakers over Boston in 85, but the Bulls, after losing the home court advantage, losing to the Lakers in game one, come back, tie the series, and they are trying to make it three out of three here in Los Angeles. Holding foul, says Jake O'Donnell. It went in, but will not count. Uh, 
The fourth team foul committed by the Lakers. So it is a non-shooting affair. Jordan being played by Smith. And that's a traveling violation. Michael Jordan has been called for steps a couple of times this evening. It'll be Laker ball, but first a timeout taken with 1.25 remaining in the fourth quarter. The Bulls 103, the Lakers 98. We'll be back in a moment. With 30 points, the Bulls lead by seven. Final seconds, Magic's three-point attempt blocked. Pippen comes away with it. And the Chicago Bulls have won their first ever NBA championship. The Bulls greeted by a portion of this foreign crowd as they try to get back to their locker room. For the Lakers, a different story. The Chicago Bulls' domination of this series has to be considered a major surprise. Mike, there was no reason to believe that the Lakers would fall apart so dramatically. I think it was a combination of things. I'm not quite sure that everyone gave the Bulls the credit they deserved throughout the season. I think everyone felt the balance of power was in the West this year, that Portland, in fact, was the best team. And when the Lakers got by them, that the Lakers then were just going to put the Bulls away. But the Bulls team was a deceiving team. They did it with a very intricate offense in the half-court area, the ability to score in transition, and then the great team defense. And Michael Jordan has answered a couple of questions. There have been doubters over the years whether a team led by Jordan could win a championship. And it is so rare for a team that has a scoring champion to go the distance. Anyone who ever questioned whether Michael Jordan was willing to give up and sacrifice for a championship was completely wrong. It was a case that Jordan is such a great winner, such a great competitor, and wanted so badly. In the early stages, he took maybe too much upon himself, but only trying to win because he knew the supporting cast had not developed yet. But once they stepped up their level of play, the Pippen moving to a new level, Cartwright doing the job in the middle, Paxson knocking out the open shots, and then Grant blossoming into the player he did, then Jordan was willing to spread the wealth around and the last time that Phil Jackson won a championship in the NBA he was a member of the New York Knicks and the Knicks clinched on this same court here at the forum back in the 72 73 season when they were able to defeat the Los Angeles Lakers in five with the victory over Detroit in the Eastern Conference final the Bulls felt that they had grown up, they had matured, they felt the difference at that particular level was all about a mental state of mind. We discussed this in the past. They said that in previous seasons, the Pistons' mind games would get to them. Well, they got past that plateau. They came out very aggressively. Michael Jordan setting the stage in that series, and then they go on after losing the opening game at home, they go on to knock off the Lakers in five. But wasn't it a maturing factor, very similar to Detroit? They grew up. but learn a lesson. They come back and win two world championships back to back. The Bulls have learned their lessons well. They've grown up. They win a championship. The celebration has begun in the Chicago locker room, and they are celebrating in Chicago as the Bulls take the Lakers in five. The NBA on NBC is brought to you by cold-filtered Miller Genuine Draft who salutes the hottest team in the NBA. So get out of the old, get into the cold. 
Miller Genuine Draft. It's cold filtered. That's how we keep our commitment to everyone who knows that draft beer is real beer, pure beer, the best beer. It's why so many people can enjoy a beer whose taste hasn't been changed by heat pasteurization and why so many people are making a change of their own to the genuine, genuine draft. Get out of the old, get into the cold. The Chicago Bulls have done it, and on the home floor of the Los Angeles Lakers, doing what the Pistons did last year in Portland, winning all three on the road, 108-101 the final. Here's Phil Jackson, the victorious coach, Jerry Reinsdorf, the principal owner, David Stern, the commissioner of the NBA, with the Larry O'Brien Trophy, emblematic of the championship. In comes the general manager, Jerry Krause. Commish, it's all yours. America was watching, and they saw two great teams. Congratulations to the Chicago Bulls and their great fans. Here it goes. Commissioner, thank you so much. I'm the least important guy here, but it's an honor to take this on behalf of a great organization and the wonderful fans of Chicago. A quick word from Phil Jackson amid the bedlam. You were part of Nick championships. I don't think anyone can see us. I know they can't see me. Maybe they can see the top of your head. <laughs> what does it mean to you, Phil? Well, Bob, if I could have a moment here behind Stacy King. <laughs> I was right here about 18 years ago when we won the championship. And it's a very meaningful thing. There's no doubt about it. That's much better winning as a coach than as a player, surprisingly. Any thoughts about Red Holtzman, who I guess was a mentor and was the Nick coach of those two championships? Well, we tried to do it the way he taught us how, taught me how to do it. With poise, hit the open man, and that's that was successful for us. Somewhere amid the bedlam, here we go. Where's Michael? Where's Michael? Let's get John Paxson over here while we can. John, oh, give me a little space. As wild a scene as I've ever witnessed, I assume we're still on the air from here. John Paxson on fire in the fourth quarter with your brother, former NBA player, your dad who played with the Minneapolis Lakers in attendance. I'm just glad I was able to step up and uh, you know, I got the shots and I knocked them down. Just, I'm happy for the, the guys in this room and the coaching staff. We, we put in a lot of hard work to get here. John, congratulations. Thanks, Bob, Bob. Appreciate it. All right, let's see if we can find Michael Jordan or Scotty Pippen. Scotty. Excuse me, Craig. Scotty Pippen, your thoughts, huh? Your thoughts on the championship. That was a great win for us. We worked for this all season, and everybody really came out and gave a great effort today. But you got to give credit to the Lakers. They really came out. They came at us, and they made us give second thoughts about winning this game here. But we still had enough guts to keep playing hard to get it. Your thoughts on your role defensively on Magic, that big switch before game two? Well, it's, it's helped us out a lot. And I think Michael realized that by stepping up and putting a lot more pressure on Magic. And I think that's why Phil stuck with Michael because he was able to put a lot more pressure than what he did in game one. Scotty, congratulations. Thanks a lot. Where's Michael? Horace Grant. Somebody go get Michael and we'll talk to Horace Grant. Unsung hero. I mean, everybody's a hero. I mean, we, we, had, we played together. The unity was there. The chemistry was there. Thank the God. Thank God. Thank God. Were you surprised by the effort of the Lakers with their backs to the wall? Oh, no, not at all. We knew they were going to come out and give a very uh, uh, good effort, but I felt that our defense uh, came to play. I'm going to try and go down into the crowd and get to Michael Jordan. Guys, excuse me. Let me get through here. Michael Jordan is the unanimous MVP. He got all 11 votes. Here we are with Michael, surrounded by his mom and his dad, and wife. I did, under the hat, that wasn't fair, but I'm covered with champagne. I can hardly see. Michael, what does it mean to you? It means so much. I mean, not just for me, but for the team and for the whole city. It's been a seven-year struggle out here. When I first got into Chicago, we started at the bottom. And Every year we just worked harder and harder until we got to it. And, you know, it's, 
It's so gratifying. You know, I'm appreciated so long in my life. You know, for my family, for my kids, everything. It's, it's the most proud day I've ever had. We read that when they broached the subject of the I'm going to Disney World commercial to you, you said only if all my teammates are involved. Yeah, I wanted that to happen, you know, for them. You know, they deserve it. Whatever I get, whatever financial situation I get from that, I'm going to spread it amongst the team. I didn't want it. I want the team to have it. I want everybody to prosper from this whole event. You know, it, it took a team to get to this point. Is there a sense of completeness and fulfillment for you now that might not have been there for all your other achievements before? Well, I wanted to get here. I, I, if, we, if I never got here, I would never have been disappointed about my career, but you know, it capped it off. You know, it, it means a lot to me. It means a lot to the city. I'm just happy that I was able to be a part of, of history in the city of Chicago. Is there a feeling of a passing of the torch, Magic Johnson, to you? And did you have any words with him toward the end of the game? Well, I know we express our love for each other and, and the love of competition. You know, uh, you know he, he, he thanked me. He, he certainly was, was very glad for me. <clears throat> but passing the torch, I mean, the NBA has got so many players that represents them, and I'm just happy to be a part of it. And I, I think besides myself, David Robson, Charles Barkley, all these other guys, is going to carry the label of the NBA from now on, and I'm just glad I'm a part of it. Do you have a quick thought about your husband's feats of daring do here? I'm just very proud of him, and I'm excited that they won the championship in Chicago. I'm very excited. He deserved everything. What are you going to do next? How are you going to spend your offseason? with my family, play a lot of golf if she lets me. I'm just going to relax and enjoy this. Michael, congratulations. Thank you. Let's go back to Marv Albert. All right, Bob and uh, Pat, your feelings from the Laker point of view of so much trade speculation, particularly involving James Worthy, what do you feel is next for your former club? Well, I don't think that has anything to do with it right now, Marv. Uh, you have to give the Bulls a lot of credit they were dominating throughout this series. They probably had the best run of any team since the Milwaukee Bucks back in 1971 as far as dominating the series. I do believe the Lakers have a lot to be proud of. It's one of those things that they have to deal with. They'll come back just as strong last year. All right, let's go over to Steve Jones. All right, Magic, it was a tough loss, but you guys let it all hang out tonight. Uh, what do you think was really the telling blow in this ballgame? I'd say it was the song. 91-90, you had the lead. They played that song, You Love It, L.A. Uh, well, I think, <laughs> <laughs> Steve, you get me. I think that, uh, you know, they hit some big shots. You know, uh, Pippen hit a big three, and then John just... Uh, uh, just got crazy on us and hit the, all the shots. All right, what about this business about retiring? I know it's just business. No, I never said it. I said that uh, I always evaluate myself after the season and see. And somebody said, well, you think about retiring? I said, only way I think about retiring if I just don't feel like playing. So I'll be back, you know. They didn't want to say it. I didn't say it. All right, you got it. Back to you, Marv. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Steve, as uh, we have discussed uh, on many an occasion, Mike, the Chicago Bulls are not just a team of superstars it is a team of of pieces and several of those pieces have their contracts coming up talking about the likes of John Paxson along with uh, Scotty Pippen and Bill Cartwright well when you talk about Michael Jordan he's in a world on his own and and then Scotty Pippen has raised his game to a new level but the others just fit in the right way the jigsaw puzzle fit together very well for Chicago they can't afford to let anyone walk away well, it appears that Mike will be back with us next season on NBC, but the fellow to my far left is uh, headed to Gotham Town, and uh, Pat, uh, best of luck in your future coaching endeavors. I appreciate it. It's been wonderful working with everybody, Bob, Marv, Mike, and I'll probably see you somewhere. All right, we'd like to thank all of you for a, a terrific season of NBA basketball here on NBC. After 25 years, the Bulls are NBA champions. For generations past and present, it is the realization of a dream. Not so long ago, we were so in faith. You and I could never forget the days. The fire seemed to flicker Cold wind came and it carried us away But we'll get back someday Baby, the dream is still alive Look here in my eyes Can't you see what I'm feeling? The dream is still alive The one of you
promotional fee has been paid to NBC by United Airlines. Come fly the friendly skies. The preceding has been a presentation of NBC Sports.